Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got amazing numbers out of the state of Virginia. Everyone was asking. We know Minnesota seems to be slipping away from Trump, but what's going on with Virginia? Glenn Youngkin moving to the paper ballots. Could it potentially help Trump? And my goodness, we've got a poll that's not a liberal pollster. Roanoke College, who had Biden up by like 15 back in August of 2020, he only won by 10. Now we've got them coming out with a poll and saying Trump is only down by three. And you take a look at the full field and maintains that Trump is down by three. We've got Rasmussen that's going to be coming out with a poll that's going to be positive for Trump in the state of Virginia as well. This is multiple polls. And you can see, I mean, this is more of a Democrat state. You, you know, the incumbent Tim Kaine there possibly winning by 11 in the Senate. But Glenn Youngkin, net approval rating of 23. It's a new high favorability, Yunkin plus 14. How about Kamala Harris sitting minus 10? That just goes to show you, remember all the the, the, uh, favorable ratings with Harris being like plus two, plus three? Not in Virginia. This is a big issue. Trump is minus 17 in Virginia. You can see. Another thing that I'm seeing is Waltz possibly being like positive or what? I mean, Waltz is a complete buffoon. This is really what Waltz should be. Waltz should be way lower than Vance. And I think he will be. There's a lot of people that are starting to understand the whole Waltz-Vance dynamic. The expectation is Vance is going to completely decimate him in the debate. And even Democrats know it. He's just, Vance is just significantly superior in terms of intellect. And, and Democrats admit that. So I think when that happens, they're, they, they're trying to smear Vance right now. And I've seen, I just saw another video today, a political video. Van, women hate Vance because he hate, it's, just, it's just all smears. It's all crap. Vance is a smart guy. They keep lying about him. It's all the cat lady stuff. And you see all of the people at, at the DNC. I mean, he's right. It is what it is. But, you know, when you say it, it's they're going to manipulate it. This is from August 12th to August 16th. Trump and all of these numbers check out. It's extremely positive. We were waiting for a poll and we got one. I think we're going to get more polls out of Virginia that are good. And remember, this changes the map for Trump significantly in terms of not needing the Rust Belt, not having to rely on it. If you can take Georgia, you only lost it by like 0.2 or 0.02 back in 2020. You take Georgia, you take Virginia. By the way, Pennsylvania, the voter registration is looking amazing. Arizona, the voter registration is looking amazing. And we're seeing more and more from pollsters coming out now saying, these numbers, the response bias is so crazy and it's all so inaccurate. Of course, ABC, any of the big time polls, they don't care. They just report on what it is. And then people say, oh my God, Kamala Harris is up by 10. People don't realize the context to it and how much of a response bias there currently is with all of the Harris supporters wanting to answer the polls. This is huge stuff out of Virginia. Trump can win Virginia. It opens up so many paths. You take Arizona, you take Georgia, you don't need any of the Rust Belt states, but I think right now, Virginia, Pennsylvania, and Georgia, that is the death scenario for the Democrats, and we also have Democrats coming out and saying, I mean, we saw what happened last night with Biden speaking, a lot of Democrats were pissed off what Biden said, I think, and this is what I said two, three months ago, normally when they hop him up on all the drugs, one of the side effects is he gets really nasty and really angry, and he could not stop just being just vicious and just being so rude and just... I mean, he, he's nasty when he gets hopped up on whatever they give him. That's why I think they might have roofied him during the debate because he was zoinked out during the debate. I'm only kidding, kind of, but um, I mean, they got him out after the debate, obviously. They forced him out because of it. Th- what he, what Biden was doing last night, because they, they, they want to run a campaign on vibes and joy and everything like that, and they have to because they can't run on any policy. Remember, it was reported that Top Democrats didn't want Harris to share any of her policy until after she won the general election, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And it goes to show you there's no substance to her campaign. But when you've got Biden going out there being vicious, going after Trump, now there's new data that's come out that Trump tweeted about, about how many times they mentioned Trump versus the actual issues. It is next level crazy. And remember, it was the exact opposite for Trump during the RNC because Republicans thought that Democrats were going to switch out Biden. Remember, J.D. Vance didn't even agree to a debate with Kamala or the Republican campaign didn't because they knew that Harris was going to replace Biden. And Democrats were trying to brag, oh, J.D. Vance is scared of Kamala. And now we've come full circle Not only does J.D. Vance want to debate Waltz, of course he wants to debate him. He wants to do it multiple times, and then Waltz declines it because Waltz is is just a buffoon. Waltz is a total clown. Remember Waltz last night just like trying to cry like 20 times? 
I mean, that, and then he does the communist bow. He'd probably do that on Wednesday. It's a total joke. Virginia, though, is looking good for Trump. You know, obviously he's losing this by, poll by three, but I'm just saying we needed polls like this. We saw what happened in Minnesota. And maybe I'm starting to think the Minnesota polls were mainly based off of response bias. The narrative with the Democrats there is, oh, they picked Waltz, so for sure she's going to win Minnesota. Waltz is really not liked in Minnesota. I mean, obviously the Democrats like him, but I could see Minnesota also being close. I think when they released those two polls, the Fox News poll and the Survey USA or whatever it is poll, I think there was some significant response bias there, and we need we might need more polls out of Minnesota. I think Minnesota is closer than people think because they released those two polls right after the Harris hype started, and we could get both Minnesota and Virginia back in play for Trump. Remember when it was Trump versus Biden? Trump did a lot to work to, to get those states back in play. Also, New Mexico, also New Jersey, possibly were the next states up. It is funny how it's just, it, this is what I was thinking, it's such a double standard how Trump has to spend all of these assets and all of these millions and millions and millions of dollars fighting against Biden in terms of ad campaigns, and then they just switch him out. Oh, but it's fine, because the Democrats did it. Yeah, it's just hilarious how that works. Uh, but uh, either way, this, these are really good polling numbers for Virginia, and also there are a few other numbers. You can see this just goes to show you, this is the poll comparison 2020 versus 2020 poll four. This is not some crazy Republican pollster. They had Biden up by 14. He ends up winning the state by 10. That's in August. This August, you can see four years later, the Democrat Harris is only up by three. And that's with Harris having all of the fake hype. Imagine when the fake hype dries up. Once we get into September, October, you're going to start seeing polls in Virginia with Trump up by like five or six probably. Or maybe not that much, maybe by like one or two though. And then we adjust for error, he probably wins the state by a few points. So Virginia is looking really, really good. And you've even got Harris people, one, one of their super PACs coming out and saying that the public polls are too optimistic. Remember what Axelrod said, the big time Democratic expert on CNN. He said, these numbers are not, it's not Harris plus four plus five in all these Rust Belt states. It's basically tied. That's what he said. He said the polls, the internal polls are less rosy than the public polls suggest and warn the Democrats that they face much closer races in key states. So you've got Democrats sounding alarms. You've got voter registration positive for Republicans everywhere. I just heard a new report out of Florida based on some of the primary early voting there. Trump might win Florida by like 12 points. And if he wins Florida by 12 points, you would say probably wins Ohio by 11 or 12 that helps Moreno in turn in, in turn as well. Um, you've got this, one of the clown Krasenstein brothers. I mean, there's like 30 things wrong with this tweet. Anyone who says the DNC is empty is lying. This place is rocking. They are afraid to admit, admit that. Okay, so number one, this is not the DNC. This is an NFL stadium, U.S. Bank Stadium. It's one of the best NFL stadiums, by the way, but this is an NFL stadium. That's number one. Number two, he says, it's. he mentions that it's not empty, even though this is not the DNC. Th these are tarps in the upper deck. So, so, I mean, how many things, it's not even the right venue. And then he tries saying that, oh, it's not empty. We can see the tarps in the upper deck. Again, this is a different event, but I'm just saying like how many things have to be wrong about a tweet? I mean, this is, this, these people are next level. They're just dumb. Developing Democrat ally Ed Krasenstein deletes this video after he was exposed for sharing footage of a U.S. Bank Stadium concert in Minneapolis while claiming it was the DNC. They are now claiming the DNC is sold out despite the conventions not selling tickets. Well, I mean, I'm, it, it's a convention. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that go to it. The arena seats 20K, the United Center, so I could understand them selling it out or whatever. That's I'm, I'm not refuting that, but there's, I mean, this is just so funny how this is not even the right, it's not an arena. This is a stadium. This is an NFL stadium that he's referencing. This is not even the, the same state, and on top of that, the video he's referencing saying it's not empty, we can see the tarps over the upper deck. So it's, I thought it was just funny. Uh, we've got breakdown Pennsylvania voter registration update from the past week. So even with all of this Kamala Harris fake hype going into the convention, Republicans still gaining in terms of Pennsylvania voter registration by 2,000. Democrats plus 3K, Republicans plus 5K, Independents plus 3.5K. Look at this. The Democrats' advantage is 354,000. You would say, well, that's going to be an easy victory based on voter registration. But you have to understand, in 2020, their lead was over 800K and Republicans barely lost the state by like 10, 15, 20,000 votes, whatever it was. They've more than cut that in half. It's gone from an 800K voter registration lead to 350K. That is a huge seismic difference. 
of around 450k less in favor of the Dems. That's a state they barely won with 800k voter registration advantage in 2020. Do the math. Pennsylvania is looking very good with voter registration. Arizona is looking very good with voter registration. Virginia is back in play now. So, so these are really good developments for Trump. There's no doubt about it. And then we do have, this was a smart thing to post by the, by the Trump team. They've, you know, you can see the Democrats have no vision or solutions for the country. This is pretty startling. They said the word Trump 147 times last night. They said inflation three times. <laughs> so, I mean, my God, they said border eight times. They said crimes. I'm surprised they didn't mention crime anymore. Isn't crime going down? They said, remember how they manipulated that? I think they've gotten called out on it. So they really can't, I mean, they still do talk about it, but the whole idea where guys, it's the genius strategy. If we want crime to go down, we need to just tell the districts and the precincts not to report on crime. And now you've got 6,000 districts reporting zero crime. But yes, the Democrats, they're the ones getting all the crime down. That's why in California, you've got people walking in, stealing stuff and them letting them do it. Just like all of the, in all the Democratic hellholes, it's all the same. The crime is terrible. And they say they should be allowed to commit crimes because people, if they're homeless, they need it. You know, you know, that's what they say. But no, no, no. They're the ones getting the crime down. It's not the fact that they told districts not to report crime. And then that's, that's why they're trying to use, oh, the crime is down. No, you're telling people not to report it. That's why it's down. So, um, th- th- you know, and it's just crazy saying Trump's name 147 times, eight times border, 27 times economy. Again, remember, Trump really never mentioned Biden during his hour and a half speech at the RNC because he pretty much knew Biden was not going to be running. And I'm sure that was strategic by the Democrats to wait until after the RNC to really oust Trump. And that's exactly what they did. But this, these are big numbers when it comes to this Virginia poll. It's not even just the first two polls here. It's also the underlying metrics with Harris being minus 10 in terms of approval rating. I still think she, she should be worse than that. But those numbers are a lot more accurate than the recent stuff we've seen with some of these swing states. And the same thing with Waltz. Waltz sitting in minus 17. And again, when you've got Vance and Waltz, they're still relative unknowns to the just the general population. When Vance annihilates Waltz in the debate, I think Vance will probably still be a negative like 10 or 12. Waltz will go to like minus 25. Uh, Waltz is a blubbering clown, okay? So, so I mean, th- these are good numbers and, and Vance, obviously, when he destroys Waltz in the debate, it's gonna be completely different in terms of that. Not that the, the debates matter too much, especially a VP debate. But again, look at these numbers. Minus 27 Biden approval rating. Even the underlying numbers in Virginia make it seem like now with the paper ballots and the love for Glenn Youngkin that this can be a state that Donald Trump can win. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.